Free speech scored another victory last Friday after a federal appeals court upheld key portions of a preliminary injunction blocking government interference with social media content. In the ruling, three federal judges found the White House, FBI, and CDC violated the First Amendment by coercing or significantly encouraging platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, to suppress speech that federal officials viewed as unfavorable and or inaccurate. So this is another um, win for the team arguing that pressure from federal agencies on social media companies to restrict, to restrict COVID-era speech um, went too far. Um, so this is the second ruling on that. This is the higher court now. Mm -hmm. um, so we are starting to get some momentum for the idea that the administration um, really overreached both administrations. Um, so this did, this was a little bit narrower. Um, I'm reading, reading the decision. So the, the Fifth Circuit said um, the White House, the CDC, the FBI, the Surgeon General's office, um, they had all definitely engaged in overreach given all the emails they said. They, uh, the Fifth Circuit disagreed with the lower court, so overruled the lower court on the State Department, um, NIAD, and CISA. Um, so a, a slightly more limited finding. They also then, remember the, um, the, the lower court judge had issued that kind of list of here's what you're allowed to do and here's what you're not allowed to do. Sure. That I think you and I, um, you know, looked at was it's kind of inconsistent. It's, it's, it's both actually national security can probably get around this and it's a bit confusing. Um, this court just said defendants and their employees and agents shall take no action formal or informal, directly or indirectly, to coerce or significantly encourage social media companies to remove, delete, suppress, or reduce, including through altering algorithms, posted social media content containing protected free speech that includes but is not limited to compelling the platforms to act, such as by intimating that some form of punishment will follow a failure to comply with any request or supervising direct or otherwise meaningfully controlled the social media company's decision-making process. So they didn't like make a list of things yeah. that just kind of you know put forth that principle. It's important to anticipate how much of the censorship is through that sort of coercion. I do wonder how traceable it's going to be knowing what we know about the the Twitter files and how much the atmosphere of um, concern trolling about uh, Russian influence and the like allow them or provoked them to make decisions that were kind of independent technically of the government to do things like censor the laptop, uh, the Hunter Biden laptop story. Uh, I, I do have concerns that these social media companies are still going to take it upon themselves, either because of the feeling of ex external pressure or internal politics to engage in forms of censorship. And I, I do hope that part of this is more transparency. We wouldn't know what we knew, know now about Twitter without transparency. And regrettably, um, Elon Musk shut down that important journalistic project prematurely because of his personal feelings and his personal spat with Matt Taibbi. So we never really got into any of the, the bulk of the censorship, which happens algorithmically. There was no investigation into what kind of al algorithmic filters is, are going on at Twitter. And we still know nothing about shadow banning are those kinds of things. And of course, the algorithms over at YouTube have been uh, such a central part of the conversation over the last few years. So this is a great step in the, in the right direction. And I hope that people continue to press to get these social media companies to really show us what's on their books and show us what they're doing. Because absent that, I still think they can get away with a lot. They can get away with a lot. But I mean, the encouragement, it was much more overt than I knew about or thought was possible at the time these decisions were coming down. I mean, they have more details in this, um, in this decision, noting that, again, this guy's come up before, Rob Flaherty, who was the White House um, kind of tech liaison to the social media companies. And um, he, he said, I, I've read off his emails before. This is a new one, or, or just one I haven't read before. Um, he said, uh, he noted for them, in an e this is an email that a, a White House official is sending to Facebook saying, why is this post still up? How does something like this happen? And are you guys effing serious? I want an answer on what happened here, and I want it today. Uh, Facebook is not trying to solve the problem. Like, like, I mean, that's, it, it's very easy for a judge to conclude you're having inappropriate conversations as the government with a social media company when you say, are you effing serious? I want an answer on what happened here today. Um, and, and, you know, and on and on. And even, on, even with the agencies that I said, the, 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 the judge said, were not plainly coercive, but, 
they did they, they they clearly did overstep just he didn't think in a way that went so far it was so obvious that the plaintiffs could prove their case so um so i don't know you're, you're worried that you know the social media companies would do a lot of this stuff any anyway obviously that's not could, a criticism that of this could be the holding case. at all sure. it's just you know i do but we've heard from zuckerberg and we've heard from uh, other people who seem real salty about everything that went down to me like genuinely upset at the decisions that got arrived at, either because they let their, you know, most compliant employees be in charge of this, or they felt actually threatened by the government or whatever it was. Um, I, maybe I'm totally naive. Um, I've definitely been accused of that before. I have a sense, and, and also maybe the, the tech CEOs just at the end of the day, they're not paying attention to this stuff. Other people, are, it's always the wrong sort of people who are going to handle these decisions. But it sounds to me like they have genuine regrets and would not do this the same way if it happened again. Sure, but I just don't think it's about that. I, as I've been saying since the very beginning, all the decisions that have been made by everybody, including the desire to go along with what the government wants them to do, which they don't always choose to do, right? But when they do, all of it has to do with that these are businesses and they want to make money. Elon is threatening to sue the uh, ADL because there is an understanding that public perception of what goes on on these sites can affect an advertiser's willing to be, and the willingness to be there. The advertisers hold the purse. These are fundamentally advertising platforms. We are only, we are, we are there for the benefit of being sold ads to. So I, I think that what is gonna ultimately constrain Elon's behavior is what's gonna constrain um, Zuckerberg's behavior. And that is having content on there that is advertiser friendly. And if that happens to align with what the, the public consensus is, because that's what the government is putting out there, generally speaking, whether it's about a pandemic or whether it's about hate crimes or whether it's about whatever, that's going to influence the kind of censorship decisions mm. that are being made on, on the app. That's why, to me, the only guarantee is at least to have the transparency to know what decisions have actually been made, not just focusing on what pressure the companies have been under. Because sometimes the, the, the pressure is coming from inside the house. I mean, I, I know you keep saying that, and I, I, I don't disagree that that could be a factor. And to some extent, that factor is not really, I mean, at that point then, again, they are private companies, and they can choose to be as responsive or as non-responsive to yeah. business interests as they want to be, as they, you know, as, they, as they try to create a viable business model. I mean, we don't pay for Twitter. We don't, I mean, unless you have Twitter Blue. You don't pay for Facebook because their business model is not a subscription model, but one where they sell ads. But all that said, especially with the COVID stuff and with Facebook, you know, based on everything we've learned, based on every, everything I saw with the emails with the CDC, I don't see. Maybe, maybe we just haven't seen it yet. Maybe that's what you're saying. We don't have a, we don't have an X or Twitter or whatever it is files for, uh, for what the advertiser frustration was if they put that in words. But the COVID um, censorship or a bad content moderation decisions seem to be not driven substantially, but I haven't seen any evidence. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but I haven't seen any evidence yet that it was dr substantially or even in part driven by advertiser demands. It seems driven by um, mostly by government demands and then somewhat the politics of the moderators at the companies. Um, now, maybe on the, the hate speech or extremist speech category on, um, on Twitter, that was potentially driven by um, by advertisers. Although again, and you know, you know, I had a very bruising battle about this last week. But it's not. I, I, again, I don't see evidence that the advertisers that there's it's it's the middleman group convincing the advertisers that the speech is bad, rather than the advertisers themselves monitoring and saying, "Oh yeah, we don't want this content anymore," or "We don't want to be next to this content," which is. St which is a, a different. That's not. I'm not. That's not government pressure necessarily either. But I'm just not. I'm not seeing so much evidence that significant content well, moderation decisions are being made based on what direct pressure from advertisers. What's really interesting is that there was this whole period of time that included the kind of discussion about who should lead Twitter, where there was this belief that because CEOs, these coastal people were liberal in nature, that there was like a built-in bias against the right. Mm -hmm. That was the argument with Twitter, it's the argument with Facebook, that was the argument up and down, left and right, and part of what incentivized Elon Musk to purchase the app for $44 billion. And 
now it feels like what you're saying is it feels implausible that any of those cultural pressures could still be in operation. And I'm a little confused by that because my- I didn't say that, no. I, I, I said that the, the politics of the employees in the content moderation positions I think was a factor in what went down. Yeah, so I, I gotta say, yeah. my interest in this stuff is not partisan. Um, and it is predates Elon Musk owning Twitter. It, it, it's more longstanding than that. And it has to do with the fact that as someone who is firmly anti-establishment, has been and will be until the day that I die, I'm not interested in feeling like I got a victory because one guy who happens to agree with me owns an app versus another, or that um, you know the, the more mainstream preoccupations of uh, the CDC or the Biden administration or whatever it is are being pushed back upon by someone like Elon Musk. There has been a much longer history of particularly left revolutionary politics being censored in this country, and it still continues to disturb me that we have had no deeper inquiry into the kind of censorship that is happening on these apps. The Twitter files just scratched at the surface of it with some of these um, uh, intelligence agency operated accounts that are t tweeting out in Arabic how wonderful it is that America has come and invaded my country. We got a little bit of a taste of that, but again, something like over 90% of all censorship and content moderation decisions are being made algorithmically. And there have been enough people, including a number of leftists, who have observed being um, de demonetized, deprioritized, um, limited uh, in growth and whatnot on these kinds of apps, for me to still want there to be, again, transparency, not just focusing on the things that we've already seen as being mechanisms of censorship. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I want because these cultural, these, it doesn't have to be coming from outside of the company and so much of it, as we saw with the Twitter files, the government would tell them to do something and sometimes they would and sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes they would preempt what they think the government would want them to do because of the broader ethos out in the world of, oh my gosh, the Russians are interfering with the election. So it's a mixed bag. And all I'm saying is that as a next step, I hope that people don't give up this fight because the only way we really know what they're doing is if we have transparency, something that we also haven't had from Twitter since the end of the Twitter files. Well, sure, but even on the topics of subjects, and I, I totally agree with you on the, the things you're spelling out being bad and 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 significant and serious. And I, you know, I never want viewers or my readers to get the idea that censorship going on on the platforms is a was a right left issue or something. It, it was very much not, and, and we we know all, and, and on. On many of the the subjects that were the um, most aggressive areas of censorship, there's actually some agreement between some people on the left and some people on the right because they often had to do with uh, with foreign policy and with some COVID stuff. Um, and, and and yes, it was done algorithmically, but still, I see, you know, we 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 do know from the little we've seen of this in the Twitter files, but we did see some reporting on this from from Lee Fong, from other people that suggest it was like state department funded groups, if not the State Department itself, pressuring Twitter to do that kind of censorship of those accounts, right? It's not like, I, I don't see any evidence that advertisers told them to do that. Wait, the, first of all, those things aren't mutually exclusive. Well, I know, but, I, but I've, I've actually seen the emails about the one, and I haven't seen anything about yeah, the other. Yeah, so my, my point is that just because you saw an email, like, I'm sorry, but I, when I interviewed Matt Taibbi and I asked him, how many documents are there total? What percentage are you allowed to look at? Try to run through the numbers and get a sense of how comprehensive the review was. The review just wasn't that comprehensive. And that's not a critique of what was reviewed. Mm -hmm. That's just an understanding of it, that there was a lot more to be seen. And that we, it's like we were looking at, you know, the tail of an elephant and projecting onto what the whole beast is. And I just think there's a lot more there especially since we know that the bulk of the content moderation decisions that are made on these kinds of apps are algorithmically, and we haven't gotten into that at all. Well, we That's are, all but I'm we saying. Are, but that doesn't mean it's not, I mean, well, I, okay, some of the moderation is being done algorithmically. Well, most of it. Appropriately. Um, you know, they're just, they're having you, you know, take down, they're automatically taking down child porn or something else or, or like actual violent extremist content. Um, but you say that... I mean, I really don't mean to get into all of this, but 
before this became a whole political debate, a lot of the criticism of these apps, including from people on the left, was that the neutral content moderation that was happening via algorithm was not neutral at all. People were pointing out that certain body types that showed cleavage were getting stripped down from TikTok, whereas other body types, it wasn't about how much you were actually showing of your body. It had to do with the kind of body that you had. People were co complaining that if you said the N-word a bunch of times in the app, you weren't taken off the app. I can attest to that, thanks to everybody in my mentions. But if you said other kinds of hate, hate, you know, language like I hate white people or white tears or whatever, people were getting taken off the app. That's anecdotal. I don't know how much that happened, but again, Nobody knows because there hasn't been an investigation into what the algorithms were doing. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll have more rising right after this.